Hey guys, what's up? It's Jenny. Welcome back to my channel. Um, subscribe if you want. I don't know. I, I, I can't promote my channel on this video. It just feels weird. Um, the title's not clickbait. I wish it was. Um, this is a story that happened 10 years ago, and it's been really heavy on my heart lately, and I've really felt um, God kind of telling me that I need to share this story. So, that's why I'm going to. I thought it would be a good way to start 2017, just get everything out in the open, basically. And the main reason why I'm telling this story is anyone out here watching this video, if anything has happened to you, like I'm describing, or um, anything inappropriate, please, please go tell someone, go get help. If someone has told you that this has happened to them, please go tell someone, because People like that need to be put in jail. That plain and simple. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of telling this um, story to spread awareness as well as just kind of share this story that I just feel like I need to tell. Um, so yeah, um, if you know me in real life, I don't want pity. So please don't come up to me and like hug me or something because it's just going to be really awkward. Um, this happened a long time ago. I've gone through so, so many things to heal from it. So yeah, please, just, just don't. <laughs> it's just gonna be awkward. I guess I'll start now. Um, I'm gonna start out by giving some, like, background information about, like, my family, because it'll make things in this story make sense. Sorry if I touch my hair a lot in this video, too. When I get nervous, I touch my hair. And, like, thinking about filming this video, I wasn't nervous at all, and now that I'm, like, sitting down and doing it, I just feel a little nervous, and if I seem kind of emotionless, it's because um, first of all, I'm not trying to ruin my makeup because it's New Year's Eve and I'm about to leave, but I just wanted to tell this story first, um, and because um, I just don't want to cry on camera, and it happened a long time ago, so, I, again, I've been through a lot of stuff to get through this. So, um, my parents have been divorced since I was in kindergarten, um, they were really just not a good match. I remember them screaming and yelling at each other, and me and my sister would just, like, hide behind the couch and just be like, let us know when we can come out. I, I, that's, like, one of my really vivid memories from my childhood. Honestly, my life has been really freaking messed up, but, um, that's besides the point. <laughs> um, and my mom has always had a pretty good job. She's been really amazing at supporting our family, especially being a single mom, um, and my dad has not had a job. He's been talking about starting a business for a while, and he's been basically living off unemployment for as long as I can remember. Um, and so when I lived with my dad, we would live in apartment after apartment, and they each kind of got worse over time. Um, I remember living in this one apartment and the cops were called like all the time and when I would go out and I would walk our dog I would just feel so scared and it was honestly terrible and we had cockroaches everywhere in that apartment um and things were kind of rough with my dad um we used to go to food pantry sometimes because my dad could no longer afford um the grocery store um and we used to buy my clothes at the dollar store, but most of the time my mom would buy clothes. But I never like went hungry or anything, and I didn't even stay at my dad's house that much, so it wasn't really that bad. Somehow my dad um, said he found this house for us to live in, and there was like a roommate, so we'd be sharing it, and things were going to be really good. Like, And I was like, wow, like a house? Like I hadn't lived in a house in so long. and. Me and my sister were going to have our own bed. We had been sharing a futon for a really long time, and it was very uncomfortable. That's what I do remember. Um, so it was going to be awesome. And it was pretty much like one half of the house was our half, and the other half was like the roommate's half. And I'm just not going to say his name because um, this is public record, so anyone could potentially look it up. But since I'm a minor, my name won't be there. So by not saying his name, you guys will never find him. Or at least, I hope not. Um, if you do happen to find him, please don't comment it. Don't spread it. That's all I ask. Um, so yeah, um, things were pretty good. Me and my sister, we were getting an allowance, which was insane. We had never, ever gotten an allowance from my dad. And we had cable again, and we could rent actual movies. It used to be where we could only, like, red box stuff, but now we could actually, like, rent stuff. And that was, like, a big deal because we could buy, like, $6 movies, you know. 
and the roommate was pretty nice. He seemed nice. He would always, like, make popcorn, I remember. Um, he, like, loved popcorn, and he always would have popcorn from his work, so we do, he would, like, make it, and it was, like, good movie theater popcorn. Uh, he was really nice to us. He would rent movies and watch them with us, and it seemed like a really good deal. That's basically what I want to emphasize, that it seemed amazing. It was, like, our dream, pretty much. So yeah, it wasn't uncommon for us to watch movies together, and my dad would just kind of like hang out in his office and like play on the computer or do whatever he freaking did, I don't know. My dad was always on the computer, that's like mainly thing I remember from my childhood. Oh, I don't know if I said this, but me and my dad have not ever had a good relationship. Um, I'm very much like my mom, I'm strong-headed, I say what I feel, and I don't let people push me around. And he did not like that because he tried to push me around basically my whole childhood. And we don't even speak now. I haven't talked to him in like three years. And he hasn't said happy to birth happy birthday to me in like two. He actually kicked me out of his house one time. And we haven't really spoken pretty much ever since then. Like therapists would try and make us have a relationship. But soon they realized that it was not going to happen. I love my mom so much. And I'm so blessed that I have her in my life instead of him. My dad was in the computer room or like his bedroom. I think that's where he kept it. Um, and I was sitting on the couch, like, laying down, and so was, my sister was on the love seat, and she was, like, sitting, and we were watching My Sister's Keeper. I remember this, like, vividly. Um, I, I can't watch that movie anymore, which kind of sucks, because it was definitely a good movie, but, um. So, and then the roommate was on the other half of the couch, and, um, he was kind of laying down, too, honestly, I can't remember. But we were sharing a blanket, and obviously I didn't think there was anything wrong with, like, sharing a blanket because I was, like, eight or whatever, and I don't know anything about, like, what's appropriate and what's not. Um, and uh, he started rubbing my legs, um, and it was, like, it was slow, you know, like, in a sensual way. Um, and he started at the bottom... And, um, he kept, like, reaching up and closer towards, like, the top of my legs and, like, my inner thighs and just, like, slowly rubbing them. And I, I was feeling so uncomfortable, but I didn't know what to do. I didn't know that was wrong. I didn't know that was inappropriate. And the whole time I was just thinking, when will this stop? Like, I hate this, but I, I didn't do anything. I didn't say anything. And I just let it happen because what was I going to do? Was, I was little and he was this big man that happened a few times i i don't remember any other specific instances i'm pretty sure that was the first time but i just i let it happen i, I didn't want to mess things up and it didn't seem that bad to me like i i could deal with someone like rubbing my legs but to this day when i like go get massages or something if someone rubs my legs i just i feel so uncomfortable so weirded out I, I can't do it like I have, when you go get a massage and they do like a full body massage you know how they like rub your legs and stuff like to massage them obviously and the whole time someone does that to me I just feel so uncomfortable and I, I mm, gotta hate it so much things just kind of went on as normal that's not like the exact instance I'm talking about that like this title means but that was definitely inappropriate and was a huge warning sign but obviously I was too young to know it Everyone started getting more and more comfortable with the roommate and my dad would actually like kind of leave us alone with him and he would stop making us go everywhere that he went and I used to always have to go to my sister's volleyball practice and one night my dad was like you don't have to go you can stay here and I was so happy I was like yay I don't have to go because I thought her volleyball practice was so boring I didn't want to sit there and watch while they played volleyball um, and so I stayed home with the roommate and he rented a movie just like he always did and I had just taken a shower um, and I was sitting on the love seat and he was sitting on the couch and then sometime during the movie he walked over to me and he he just um, started rubbing my legs again and he pushed them apart so that I was kind of like spread eagle in a way um, and he started messing around with the band of my pants and um, sticking his hand down there and you guys can guess what he was doing um, it was so inappropriate and I was so scared 
that I couldn't scream. Um, when I get really scared, I just, I can't scream. I just, I can't say anything. Uh, but in my mind, I was just screaming and I was so terrified. And I couldn't, I couldn't say stop. All I could do was try and push off, push him off of me, but he was so much stronger than me and he just kept pushing my legs down more and more. And he sexually abused me. <laughs> and, um, Finally, I got him to get off of me, and I just ran into my bedroom, closed the door, and um, I sat right up against it because I didn't want him coming in. And I remember him being outside of the door and saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I didn't do anything, I didn't do anything, you're fine, you're fine. Basically, like, trying to convince me that um, what he did wasn't wrong. And um, I grabbed my diary. I, I wrote in a diary at the time, which, like, makes me sound so lame, but I was in third grade, so, you know. And I wrote about what happened, and I was like, I don't know what to do, like, I don't want everyone to hate me. Something along the lines of that, I don't know. I don't have the diary anymore, which I'll get to later. But, um, yeah, I just, I sat with my back up against the um, door for a really long time until my dad and my sister came home. And I went on for a few months just not telling anyone, acting like everything was fine. And he never tried to do anything again because I think, um, I don't know why, I, I just don't think I gave him a chance. I, I'm pretty sure I, I feel like I remember like not ever letting myself be left alone with him or sitting near him or anything. And my mom used to throw a Christmas party every year and um, it was like all of our friends would be there. Like my friends, my sister's friends, my mom's friends. And I was sitting in my room with my best friend at the time and his sister. And I was really close to his sister. She was like an older sister to me. And it had been really heavy on my heart about what happened. And I had been thinking about it so, so, so much. And I was finally like, I, I have to tell her. Which is like awful of me as a third grader to tell someone that wasn't really that much older than me. Maybe like a few years older than me. This major story. But I told her and then um, I showed her the diary pages. That's how she found out. And she was old enough, I think she was in sixth grade maybe, and she knew that was wrong. And um, she was like, you have to tell your mom. And we told her brother. And I was like, I, I can't tell my mom, like, she's going to hate me. Um, like, I just, I can't do it. I can't ruin her Christmas party. So um, I waited until the end of the party, and then I told my mom. And I'm pretty sure we called the police after that. And then I told my dad, um, maybe like a day or so later, and my sister and my dad, I just remember him saying, you're lying, you're lying, this isn't true, you're just trying to ruin my life. Because again, me and my dad have not had a good relationship. And he was just yelling at me and saying I was lying. And I think that's the worst part, that my dad didn't believe me. Because I was like eight, I didn't know anything about this. I didn't know anything. Why would I make it up? And... Um, my mom was so, so supportive of me. She contacted everyone, and they started, like, working on my case. Um, I remember they would show me, like, pictures of, like, female anatomy, and I would have to, like, point out what he did to me and describe everything in detail. Like, I told the story so, so, so many times, which is what kind of made me not do it in a way. Um, and I started going to counseling at the CAC, which is an amazing, amazing place. It's the Children's Advocacy Center over where I live. And they just deal with all kinds of, like, sexual abuse um, and, like, rape cases and stuff. And I was put into group therapy with a bunch of other girls who had had um, sexual abuse happen to them. And <laughs> those are some of the most amazing girls I've ever met in my life. And some days in group, we would just, like, sit and we would just talk about our life and we would mess around and just be kids. And then other times we would all be bawling because we'd be telling our stories or listening to other people's stories. And I also did um, like individual therapy there as well. And when I graduated from the therapy program, when they basically were like, you're okay, you don't need our help anymore, um, I got a bear and um, it's downstairs in my room. I'll never ever get rid of it. Um, it's like, it's not even a bear, it's a lion. Um, I might have gotten a bear too. Honestly, I can't remember. I have a few stuffed animals, but I know for sure one of them was a lion. And I got a blanket, too. And I still have that blanket. I will never, ever get rid of that, either. And then at my graduation, each one of the girls um, all picked the color of sand, and they put it in this little jar, and they wrote down something about the color. And me um, and, like, 
it was really nice and sweet things. I still have the jar of sand too as well. It's kind of mixed together just from like moving around and stuff, but um, I'll never get rid of that either. And it was honestly such an amazing place and they did so much for me and my family. And I'm so, so, so grateful that organizations like that exist and help out kids that have had this terrible thing happen to them and make them feel that they're not alone and they're not a bad person for what happened to them because it's not my fault that a grown man couldn't control himself and know what is right and what's wrong. I was forced to live in the same house as my abuser for a very, very long time. My mom tried and tried to get me out of the house, but my dad was still insisting that I was lying. So it was making it hard and obviously my abuser was denying it as well because what abuser wouldn't? Um, so it was basically like I couldn't be in the same room as him alone and I couldn't go in his room obviously and we were supposed to not talk. and. Um, that didn't happen. I saw him in passing a lot of times or I would be in the kitchen and he would be in the kitchen and it was terrible. I would cry about not wanting to go there and I just, I hated it so, so much. And finally my mom got the courts to make it where I didn't have to go there and where my dad would get in big trouble if he brought me back there. And so we would um, meet up at this park and we would eat peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and drink disgusting lemonade because it was room temperature. And that was my Thursday for weeks and weeks and weeks. And sometimes my dad would just sit there and not really talk to us. Sometimes we would play cards. Sometimes we would fight and I wasn't allowed to leave. And most of the time I would cry because I just didn't want to be there, which is like, obviously, why would I want to be there with someone who doesn't believe me, doesn't trust me, keeps telling me that I've ruined their life. Um, and it was terrible. And one time my dad stopped back at the house and he brought us with him. And we, we just sat in the car, but he ran in and he like grabbed some stuff. We were like going camping or something, I'm pretty sure. And my mom found out and she ended up um, picking up me and my sister and not letting us go back um, because my dad had violated that and she just didn't want me to be in that situation. And I love her so much for that. I'm so grateful that she supported me and did really everything she could to make sure that um, my abuser was going to get in trouble. My case was not that severe, obviously. Um, there wasn't like a lot of proof about what happened besides my diary. Um, and it was just kind of like a he said, he said, she said. So basically he got probation and I gave a victim impact statement, which is basically where you get to like talk to your, your abuser in a courtroom and say how what they did to you affect them. And they have to sit there and listen pretty much. And I remember my victim impact statement going there. And I remember telling my dad not to come, I'm pretty sure, either that or he just didn't come because I didn't want someone that didn't support me to be there. Sorry, my brain is kind of like full of thoughts at the moment and it's like hard to piece everything together and say everything the way I want to be said. My abuser is actually in jail now. He violated his probation. He was supposed to register as a sex offender, but he never did. So he's in jail. I don't know for how much longer. I'm pretty sure it was like a 10 year sentence. Um, that's where he deserves to be. I just really wish that he could be in jail, but I understood that my case wasn't severe enough in the eyes of the law to put him away. But this experience changed me in such a good way because I did have to go through so much counseling and therapy and it made me so much stronger and made me realize I didn't have to put up with my dad's crap, which is basically probably part of why I'm so strong-headed today because I was already strong-headed to begin with and then after having someone just kind of emotionally abuse you as well, um, I finally was able to get myself out of that toxic situation. I guess that was basically the good thing that came out of it. There's more stuff I want to say, but I can't, I can't get it out. If you're watching this video and you've had someone inappropriately touch you, make you touch them inappropriately, rape you, any of those things, please, please, please go report it. It will change your life for the better. And people that do that deserve to be put in jail. I strongly, strongly believe that. And I, I don't want your pity again. Please, no one comment. I'm so sorry that happened to you because it happened and it has made me a better person. And that's basically why I want to share this story, just to spread awareness. Because so, so, so many sexual abuse cases don't go reported 
or they're by someone you know, it's rarely ever by a stranger. So no matter how bad you think the repercussions will be, the benefits of telling will be so much better. And if you're watching this and that has happened to you, I love you so, so, so much. And I'm praying for you and I really would love for you to go out and share your story and spread awareness about this because people tend to look down on rape victims or sexual abuse victims and say, oh, you shouldn't have done this, you shouldn't have done that. Bottom line is, they shouldn't have touched you or raped you or anything like that. And, oh god, that's why it pisses me off when people say that. Oh, I've been totally rambly in this video and I actually kind of managed to keep myself together, which the other time I filmed this, I did not keep myself together, but the footage was blurry, so I'm really glad that um, I was able to refilm it. But that's pretty much it for this video. I think I said everything I wanted to say. Um, I'm sorry, it's really freaking long. I love you all. I hope you have an amazing, amazing 2017. I'm so ready for this year and for what it's going to bring. I love you all. And I guess I'll see you in my next video, which will be much better than this. I'm sorry I'm a mess. I'm sorry this video was a mess. But um, it's just like hard to bring all that stuff back up and like tell it because I can casually tell this story to anyone and be like, yep, I was sexually abused when I was in third grade. But then when I have to like sit down in front of in front of a camera and tell um, my subscribers, I don't know, it just like becomes so much more real to me. Uh, yeah, well, I love you guys and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys.